Yo, what's going on YouTube and welcome back to Goal Line Hockey, it's your boy Kevin Forte and today we are taking a look, oh man here we go again, it's the yearly video at this point, the Toronto Maple Leafs are down 3-1 in their series to the Boston Bruins and we're going to try and discuss this because this is a new wrinkle on the system than what we've seen over the last couple of years, it might potentially be the same result at the end of it but a different way to get there unfortunately for the leap so we're going to go over that here today so first off let's get to the series right now so the series right now is in favor of three one three wins for the bruins one win for the leafs the first game the bruins won game one in boston the leafs won game two in boston and that gave a little bit of hope okay that's not bad right coming out of boston one one not bad then they go home, and you're thinking the Leafs have the have the advantage, right? They have home ice for the next two games. Hey, listen, if worst case scenario, you win one, and you and best case scenario, you come back to Boston maybe up three one, except the exact opposite. I I really didn't expect them to go down three one in this series. I expected this to be two two, but there was no response from the Toronto Maple Leafs in Game Four, and here they are. In a situation, once again, where they potentially find themselves on the brink of elimination on Tuesday. Um, yeah, this is a team that I, I can't really figure out why they can't get their act together. Now, there's a lot more wrinkles to the story, like I said, this year. You know, Sam Sonoff has not been good. I love Ilya. He's a good goalie. He's a good dude. But, damn, this series, he has not been been good for the Toronto Maple Leafs and on top of that this team's defense has not been good their power play has been abysmal not good enough and the big guys the core four are just not producing enough and what's even more concerning is there seems to be some underlying issues with the top players to make things even worse and we're going to discuss all of that so like I said let's let's go back to the basics let's start off with the goaltending what has gone wrong in between the pipes? Samsonov has not been good for the Leafs. He gave up a couple really bad goals this series. He's given up a couple muffins, and it's it's one of those things where it's just very deflating. For a team that already is very fragile in terms of their confidence in the playoffs, to have a goalie that you're not sure if any given shot could potentially go in, that is concerning. And that's just this is not the Samsonov we saw last year against the Tampa Bay Lightning in the first round. It, it's just not the same form. And unfortunately, it couldn't come at a worse time for Sammy because he is a UFA this summer. Power play. Guys, the Leafs have always had a good power play. And I remember saying in the preview of this series, hey, listen, the last week of the season, the Leafs power play, eh, there's some things they could clean up. They didn't look too good down the stretch. And here we are. In this series, the Leafs' power play is 1 for 14. 1 for 14 on the power play. That is 7% on the power play. Yikes. That's not going to cut it for the Leafs. And again, that contributes to the fact that your top guys are not scoring. That's what that is about. That's where Nylander, Marner, Matthews, Tavares, that's where those guys got to shine. And who is that? Oh, yeah, that's four. That's the core four. Those guys have to be scoring in those positions. And they're not. So, 1 for 14 on the power play. That's got to get cleaned up. And the goaltending. Those are two big ones. Like I said, this kind of intertwines with it. But the core four not scoring. That's alongside the power play. Kind of intertwined with each other. And then the defense. Let's get to the defense. Because the defense has been a massive issue for this team. And that third goal. We were doing a live stream during that. And it was just such a weird concurrence of events and next thing you know it's David Pasternak and Brad Marchand on a semi breakaway 2-1-0 in the third period like like how does that happen now it was I think it was McCabe or Edmondson one of those defensemen tried to step up at the blue line to be aggressive to keep Marchand from getting the puck he missed Marchand taps the puck right past him 2-1-0 and then the guy that was covering past covering Pasternak just wasn't there that's an easy 2-1-0 Marchand just chips it right over for the one-timer for Pasternak and you know nine times out of ten that puck's probably going in the back of your net 
and just in the worst case scenario, that was the worst thing that could have happened. They had a 2 nothing lead, and then they make it 3 nothing. And, and Marner ended up scoring his first of the playoffs here. It was a really nice goal, acrobatic goal, through the legs, puts a top shelf, nice shot, right? Or I think he banked it off somebody, whatever. Anyway, he scored the goal. But then there's all the drama around this team now, right? So now that we've covered some of the recap of the series, the drama around this team, going into the series, it was already the, okay, here we go. Here's the Bruins again. This is always an issue for us. We have to slay the dragon if we want to win the Stanley Cup. And I, and I said that in the beginning of this series. If the, if the Leafs want to win a Stanley Cup, I don't think fans would be satisfied there in Toronto if they didn't beat the Boston Bruins in one of those four series or the three series in the East, right? And then winning the cup final. I don't think, I don't think Lee fans would want it any other way. And the way things are going right now, you know, Nylander doesn't start the playoffs because he's injured. And then there's all this stuff about, well, it might be a knee injury. He, the way he's skating his, you know, on film and practice, he looks a little bit off, but for the most part, he looks fine. So why isn't he playing? Is this mental health? Is he scared of the playoffs? He picked up his cookies and points during the season. He doesn't need to play in the playoffs. And then the Leaf fans being, unfortunately, a lot of Leaf fans, unfortunately, but kind of turning on Nylander and becoming kind of toxic. And unfortunately, you know, we kind of now find out that he does have a, maybe a mild migraine, um, which, you know, if anyone's had migraines, thank goodness for me personally, I don't really suffer from migraines, but whenever you have a headache, it's basically that times a hundred. So to sit there and say that this guy's being, a, a, you know, he's not trying, he doesn't care and this and that, I, I just think that's a really in an uninformed argument. Um, it's just stupid. So I think the Leaf fans pulled back on him a little bit, but because, you know, toxicity runs in the family for a lot of people, unfortunately, there. Then they turn on Mitch Marner because then, of course, they catch footage during the game. Marner throwing his glove on, you know, throwing his glove behind the bench and complaining. And that's the thumbnail of today's video. I'm sure you guys know what I'm talking about, the iconic photo from last night and, unfortunately, an infamous iconic footage from last night and then you see Matthews kind of talking to him kind of he seems a little bit PO'd and then Nylander with a little bit of lip reading you could understand he says stop crying bro this isn't juniors or shoot the puck or whatever he was saying and, and that's kind of what the message was and you know, if things couldn't be bad enough for the Leafs, if the Leafs couldn't just lose this game, now there is all this, there is just more fuel for the fire. And, um, you know, it is a little bit of a, it is a knock against Marner. And then, and then, things, Kevin, how could things possibly get worse? The defense sucks, the goaltending sucks, Marner's getting, you know, kind of, you know, chirped at by his own teammates. Kevin, how could things get worse? Because this happened in the second period. Now we start the third period, and there is no number 34 for the Toronto Maple Leafs. Austin Matthews did not play the third period of this game, and basically the reasoning was, and this is from Chris Johnston's reporting, he said Austin Matthews did not play in the third period due to an illness he has been dealing with. So on top of Nylander not playing for part, portions of this series, Marner having issues in this series, and then he actually, you know, on live television, actually getting chirped by his teammates. Now we have Austin Matthews not playing the third period of this game. Kevin, where is the bright spot? Where can things be good for the Maple Leafs at this point? And I'm going to tell you, Leafs fans, don't give up hope. Now, I know you're probably laughing and you're saying, Kevin, you, you don't know what you're talking about. This is, this, we've seen this story before. The Leafs have come back from these series before. They win games five and six. They go to game seven, and we know the story. They drop it in game seven anyway. So even if they somehow drag this to a game seven, best case scenario, they're going to end up losing in Boston because they do not win in TD Garden on a game seven. It doesn't happen. Okay. But here's the difference. There's no more pressure on the Leafs. And the reason I say that, and you might sound crazy, but there's no pressure on this team because nobody expects them to win this series now. And I think that's something that happened with the Islanders the other day. I know, I'm comparing the Leafs to the Islanders. But when you have no pressure on you, it is now all on the Bruins. Turn this on the Bruins. 
because if the Bruins somehow lose this series, the Bruins will be the new laughingstock of this season in the playoffs. If they choke this one away, all the pressure goes on the Bruins. Now, the Leafs are going to have to show a lot of urgency here. That is for certain, because now every game they play the rest of this series is going to be an elimination game. And that could be tiring. If they have to do that three more times here, that's a lot. But it's not impossible. Now, the problem is they got to stop putting the puck in their own net, basically. Um, like I said, the, you know, I kind of said this in my live stream last night. I mean, the, everyone has kind of discounted the Bruins' defense. As much as they've lost up front, that center core doesn't have Bergeron and Krejci in it anymore they still have an incredible defense and, of course, good goaltending. Jeremy Swayman is a UFA this summer. Just saying. But anyway, this is one of those things where you have to find a way to score goals. And guess what? Austin Matthews scored a goal in this series. You know what happened in that game? The Maple Leafs won that hockey game. Incredible. So... I think it's one of those things for this Maple Leafs team. If Austin Matthews is able to score, if this team is able to get off the schneid a little bit, get some more opportunities, and I'm going to show you real quick here. Just look at the shots in this game, period by period, okay? So this is the first period, right? And the shot chart is not impressive. So the Bruins get the one goal here, JVR, right? Of course, just, just to turn the knife already in your gut. Uh, JVR with a goal there, right in the top of the slot. And I like to compare the trapezoid, right? This is the trapezoid. So from the goal line to the first hash mark on each side in the crease. Anything in here, this is the house or the trapezoid. They gave up a goal really at the top of the trapezoid. And there's a couple pretty good opportunities here. John Beecher, JVR again. A couple of good opportunities. The Leafs only had one. Mitch Marner on a backhand save right in the slot everything else the Bruins kept everything to the outside right a couple shots from the point a couple points from the top of the circle but nothing really all that threatening only real one threatening shot in the first period in a really big game for the Leafs so you're going to think in the second period well they're obviously going to swift the momentum right okay now again Marner and Tavares so in the in the first two periods of this game the Leafs had three quote-unquote high danger scoring opportunities in the house that's it now i will say the defense played much better in the second period for the leafs only giving up one opportunity in the house but guess what that puck went in the back of the damn net and that was pasternak and they gave up a goal from marshand that was outside of the house so not only yeah so again Good job by the Leafs, only giving up one opportunity there, but that one opportunity cost them, and they gave up a bad goal outside of that. So, through the first two periods, pretty even in terms of the opportunities in the house. The Bruins had four, the Leafs had three, but the Leafs scored zero, and that's the problem. You have to be able to score in those opportunities, and they didn't. So let's head to the third period, because obviously the Leafs have to show a ton of urgency in the third, right? There should be a ton of shots, tons of shots in the slot, just trying to do anything they possibly can, right? One, two, three. Three shots in the house for the entire third period for the Leafs. Now, Martyr did score that goal. Finally, they were able to break through, but one is not enough when you gave up three in the game. One of those was questionable by Marshan. Uh, you could argue two. The first one really wasn't great either. But that's the difference. They did not get enough good opportunities in this game. And look in the house. Four opportunities in the quote-unquote house by Boston in the third period. And the Leafs only had three. And the Leafs were down by two. The Bruins were up by two goals, and they still had more opportunities and high-danger scoring opportunities than the Leafs did. What's wrong with that? So, I'm going to end the video with this, because a lot of people are saying it's good that this team is showing emotion, because usually they sulk on the bench, and they just sit there, and they take it, and that's it. And they don't really show anything, and they just lose. But here's the difference. We're going to see over the next 
potentially one to three games, depending on how far this series goes. There's a difference between emotion and caring and finding a way to motivate yourself with that passion and emotion. And there's the self-destructive emotion. The emotion and the glove throwing we saw from Marner and the chirping from Nylander and all that. Is that going to be self-destructive emotion? Or is that going to be the emotion that generates the momentum and the motivation for this team? We're going to find that out through the rest of this series, however long it goes. But I understand Leafs fans' frustration right now because, like, you know, I, I watched uh, Steve, Dangle's pod, uh, Steve Dangle's LFR last night. And, you know, how do you believe in a team that has done this so many times where, best case scenario, they get to Game 7 and they just crush your dreams, your, they just crush your dreams in Game 7? So, like I said, they have nothing to lose. They have no pressure here. Take it one game at a time and see what happens. And I will say, I'm already prepping the video for the offseason because I already have a full breakdown of the Leafs offseason. And I'd love to post that video, but I need them to get eliminated first. But if the Leafs lose this series, expect massive changes in Toronto this summer. I'm going to end it with that. Guys, that's going to do it for today's video. Thank you for watching this video. If you like the video, make sure to like, comment, share, and subscribe to the channel. Also, we've got our merch drop. That will be coming for the summer. That summer series will be coming very shortly. So stay tuned for that. Also, if you'd like to become a member, we have a members-only live stream. We'll be doing some videos over the summer. Kind of non-hockey, hockey slash hockey, non-hockey content. If you're interested in any of that, become a member today to help support the channel. Guys, as always, thank you so much for watching today's video. And I'll see you again next time. Peace out, guys.